Hello everyone. Welcome to session 5 of module 1, The Psychology of Testing. In this session, we will cover some of the psychological factors that influence uh, testing, software testing. So, we'll discuss several factors like clear objective, why you should be very clear uh, when you are working in a testing organization or in a testing team. What, why independent testing is important, how you should give a feedback on defects and why clear and courteous communication is important while, while communicating with developers and communicating for the defects. So let's first understand what independent testing means because this is more relevant to ISTQB um, foundation level exam. So mindset is different if you're building or developing something. So if you are trying to build something, your mindset is to it, it's kind of positive around it. You want to build something. You work positively to build something. Same thing happens with the developers. They are trying to build something. Their mindset is to make things work. But for the testers, mindset is different because for you, you want to break things. You want your, your mindset is to find issues what they have made. Um, so testers look for issues or defects in a product, but developers work positively and the testers uh, are kind of, they, they find issues, they find defects. Um, they, their, their mindset is to find errors in what developers have developed so there's a different difference in the mindset and because of that independent testing becomes very important to find issues and defects as you know the mindset is different for developers and testers so it's difficult to find any mistakes in your own work it's it's true with every human being if you are building something you are making something it's very difficult to find errors in your own work, to find mistakes in your own work because your mindset is building things positively and you, you won't be able to find errors as another person who will be looking at your work will notice those errors very easily. So another person will be able to find more issues than the person who developed it. So in a software context as well, developers perform some testing of their code and then other people perform rest of the testing. So that's why that that's why it's you know kind of independent testing um, is is required. So when developers are developing something, they they do perform you know unit testing and other basic testing but the actual testing is done by a person who has different mindset that is a tester who can perform rest of the testing and that testing is known as independent testing a testing performed by um, another person um, who has not developed the software is sort of independent testing and so there, there are level of independence which uh, which we'll discuss later. So independent testing may be carried out at any testing level. So it, it can be carried out at unit testing, functional testing, integration testing, or um, system testing level. At any testing level, you can perform ind independent testing. So independent testing avoids author bias and is more effective in finding defects. So due to difference in mindset of developer and tester tester will be able to find more issues and defects in a product as compared to a developer who himself is developing the software so that is why independent testing is required in 
any software testing uh, in any software development organization then what are the levels of independence so different levels of independence in ascending order are so testing done by developers person who wrote the code he'll also when when he'll he'll while he is developing the software he'll his mindset is kind of to make the software work but when he's testing that same code he's his mindset is a bit different he's kind of trying to figure out um, that the module or the code that he has written does not break with different scenarios so this is the least least i mean minimum level of independence that can be done a person who wrote the code himself is doing the testing that's the minimum level of in independence uh, because the same person cannot have very different mindset while he was you know developing and then he is testing now another person in team another developer performs the testing so so suppose a developer a developed something and developer b is performing testing of the of uh, the code that developer a developed so that's a bit high level of independence because another developer or another um, another developer is uh, testing the code written by um, developer a but since both are developers it's he would still not be able to find as many defects as a tester would be able to be uh, find the defects because since both are developer both both will be kind of having similar mindset of constructing or creating the software rather than breaking the software another person from a different organizational group does testing so that is independent test team so that's more higher level of independence like another person from um, a different organizational group so a development group would be different a test group would be different so that's another level of independence and that's where uh, testers are able to find more number of defects because it's it's a completely different mindset uh, for the group of for a different group of people who are doing testing and the final level of independence uh, the, or the highest level of independence is testing done by completely different organization or outsourced to an external body so if development is done in-house and testing is outsourced to another testing organization then and done by independent testers with a testing mindset with a mindset to break the software and that's the highest level of independence and so the last two um, levels of independence will be able to figure out most number of defects because a test group in a different organizational group or a different organization completely a different organization has a group of testers who have completely different mindset from developers and they'll be able to find much more number of defects as compared to developers testing their own work then tips for reporting defects or failures so this is very important when you are working in a test team because communication when when you are communicating defects or failures you should always be in a neutral way so never gloat don't criticize or blame developers everybody is human being developers are also human being and human beings make errors so while developing as well it might not be there their personal uh, personal um, capability or it, it won't it's not always that they are not capable enough because of that that the defects arise 
So you should never criticize or blame the developers. There are a lot many other factors due to which uh, defects arise in the software. It, it might be the development process that needs to be looked at. It might be that developers are new to that technology. They are still learning. So never ever criticize or blame developers for any defects or failures should always be constructively critical and discuss defects with developer whenever you find a failure or defect you should be constructive go to developers ask them about the failure show them the failure discuss them how it came discuss them the, the root cause whether it's a defect or it's something environmental which you can just go back and re-verify and it, it's, it's working. So you should be always um, constructive, communicate in a proper, in a polite way to the developers and never criticize or never blame because it's nobody's individual fault or individual capability that defects arise in a software. So whenever you are reporting or communicating defects, failures, it should be in a neutral way. Then explain that find, by finding the issue earlier, we can deliver better software. So you need to work as a team, developers and testers, you need to be as a team. It, although it's an independent entity, you are trying to break what they are uh, they are building but it has to be it's it's a combined effort of both the teams to deliver better software you both are trying to deliver robust and better defect free and easy to use software in the market so whenever you find any failure or error you need to mention that what worked in the software, what is what looks good, what functionality is right, what is what is the best part about the software. And then what doesn't work in the software, what are the defects, what where are the problems in the software. So prioritize defects properly. Should not put everything in critical. You should not prioritize every defect as a critical defect don't be always pessimistic so whenever you are talking to developers always be optimistic don't be always pessimistic that this is not working none of the features are working so everybody has to work as a team to deliver a better software so while communicating with developers you have to tell them whatever is working fine in the software where the problem is prioritize the defects properly do not prioritize all the defects as critical and be optimi optimistic and be open and discuss all the issues and failures with de with developers before um, raising any defects into um, into the defect management tool so it's always it's, it's not always possible to discuss each and every defect but yes most of the time it's it's a good idea to just let them know let them know and if you if you're doubtful that it is is it actually a defect or it can be an environment environmental issue then definitely go to a defect to a developer and discuss with them before raising a defect in defect management software then uh, clear and courteous communication is very important. So start with collaboration, not battles. It is very important that you collaborate with development team. So testing and dev team need to collaborate. It's not a battlefield where you are fighting with developers to fix whatever defects you have been raised. So you always need to be polite and helpful you need to understand what others can feel you should not blame 
for the defects that arise into anybody's functionality is it's it's nobody's fault in development team defects can arise because of many other factors so you need to understand others feeling you need to collaborate you need to be clear and courteous while communicating the defect then you need to confirm other team member understands what you're trying to convey it is very important that developers are able to understand what you're trying to convey to them whatever defect or issues you have found it's very important that you clearly communicate to them and they understand what you want to say then improving interpersonal and communication skills it is very important if you're working as a tester your interpersonal and communication skill are very very important and you need to work on your interpersonal communication skill if you want to be a successful tester so as testers it is critical to communicate our findings in neutral and effective way should not blame anybody it should be always neutral and very effective way should not hurt anybody's feeling you need to keep um, you need to be very careful uh, that it whatever you communicate whatever you talk about failures defect doesn't hurt anybody personally in the development team problems can occur within team if testers are just singing only as messengers of unwanted news about defects so testers are not only there to find just defects in the software there are many other things they need to collaborate with team they need to help the developers in lot many other things um, not just only to find the defects and just as a messenger of the defects so they need to help the developers to figure out the root cause what is causing them they need to work in a in a collaborative way as a team to deliver better software for the software developer or document author defect information can help them improve their skill and quality of work only if it is provided in a proper way so for any software developer or any any document author if you provide the defect information in proper way it will help them to improve their skills and quality of work so that is why it is very important when you communicate any defect or failure it's very important you communicate it very effectively and clearly to the developer we can provide effective risk assessment information for defects found which will save time and money later or and reduce risk so you should not only be just find the defect and send it to developer or raise it in defect management tool and just be a messenger of defect you can work a bit deeper find the root cause help them to narrow down down the issue and help them to figure out and fix it quickly rather than just finding the defect raising it um, blindly and asking them to get it fixed so to conclude in this session we learned about the psychology of testing and importance of various psychological factors in testing so different psychological factors that we discussed in this session are the clear objective that your objective test objective should be very clear when when you when you are doing testing we understood independent testing why independent testing is important and different levels of independence then how you should communicate when you find any failures or defects what how what, what should be the feedback on defects and why clear and courteous communication is important and why you should work as a collaborate uh, in a collaboration as a team with developers rather than um, two completely separate entities or just messenger of defects thank you